Welcome back. Robots could soon help frontliners fight fires and conduct search and rescue missions. Now behind that is a new $100 million research center that will be up and running by next year. The Home Team Science and Technology Agency will also look at more than 300 use cases to help responders deal with threats faster, with the first operationalized as early as end of the year. Nasha Rohim with more. Imagine you've been knocked out. Here to save the day is Iron Man. Not the superhero, but a human-like robot. With a pair of metal helping hands, he's there to cut the wrist for frontliners during dangerous missions. The robots uh, will be able to navigate autonomously in the scenario. While it still needs a bit of a push, in about four years' time after more R&D, this robot will be deployed to move on its own. This initiative marks a fundamental shift in the development of robotics capabilities in the home team. From today's pre-programmed systems to tomorrow's Gen AI-powered intelligent platforms that can move, think and act autonomously to protect and save lives. Another piece of technology is this AI system. This work in progress could potentially boost first responders' productivity by 30%. And this is how it works. It will take real-time audio and video recordings of a crisis like a fire. It will then use artificial intelligence to provide analysis and recommendations. This will make response times faster and streets safer. But there's still a long way to go until these metal boots hit the ground. It still needs to adapt to real-time situations faster. In an emergency, these precious seconds could make the difference between life and death. Then there's also learning how to operate in multi-ethnic, multicultural Singapore. The good news is there is already a breakthrough to localize the back-end AI technology. This language learning model is able to understand complex terms and major languages like Malay and Tamil. It understands things like our terminology, our hierarchy, our internal SOPs and laws and rules. And, you know, all of these things are conveyed naturally by the training that we do so that the officer can just do what they need to do best, which is the analysis. In order to find the best people to develop such innovations, HGX is expanding their workforce. They're looking to hire over 150 positions to develop AI products that keep Singapore safer, smarter and just a bit more sci-fi. Now, for more on how Singapore can explore humanite technology, we have with us Professor Louise Fee, Vice President of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at NTU Singapore. He is a renowned robotics expert with multiple patents to his name. Professor Fee, welcome to the program. Hello. So, first of all, Professor, what's your take on using humanite robots uh, for high-risk roles like firefighting? We understand that this idea is not new in the world, but is this a viable solution for perhaps society's safety challenges? Yes, uh, the science of robotics came about because humans, like us, uh, we want the machines to be doing things that we don't want to do, laborious things, dangerous things. Um, so firefighting is, is one of such. Yeah, so uh, uh, you know, the, the firemen that we have, uh, I salute them. They're probably the, the bravest uh, people in our society. Mm -hmm. So each time they run into a fire, they're risking their own lives. But again, we don't expect them to be sacrificing their lives to save uh, another life. But it's different for uh, a humanoid robotic. Uh, we, we expect them to, to sacrifice their existence uh, to save another human uh, life. Mm. So, you know, uh, teaming up with a real fireman, uh, I, I think that makes sense uh, moving forward, uh, whereby the humanoid uh, robot will be tasked to do the riskier tasks in, in firefighting. You are a robotics expert, but what's the biggest technical hurdle to getting humanoid robots ready for those kinds of dangerous jobs? Mm. So, I, I think that... Um, uh, uh, as you can see, even the HTX robot, it, it takes a little bit more work to do. Mm. Uh, basically, there are two aspects that uh, need more development. Okay? The first is, is really the hardware. And when you talk about hardware, uh, you're talking about uh, 
you know, developing uh, humanoid robots to be more like us. You know, when, when you know, someone utters the word humanoid robots, the first thing you do is uh, people think of C-3PO, remember from Star Wars, <laughs> that, you know, very stiff movement very much robot. So. Yeah, yes. that's true. Yeah, but we've come a long way from uh, then, you know. Uh, now you see robots, humanoid robots uh, dancing, doing somersaults, even kung fu fighting. Yeah, so uh, we've made a lot of progress, uh, but of course, uh, 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 more to do, okay? Mm. But I, I, I envisage that in the next few years, uh, you know, we'll be building uh, humanoid robots that can run faster than Usain Bolt, you know, <laughs> jump uh, longer than any human beings. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is, is software. Mm. Um, I, I, I think with the progress of uh, artificial intelligence, um, you know, now robots are able to adapt to changes in the environment. Uh, they are able to think for themselves. They are able to make decisions uh, on what to do next. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, um, communication uh, is important. Uh, uh, even as we speak, we are developing uh, large language models. Mm. Uh, for ourselves in Singapore context. Mm. You know, imagine if you buy a robotic system from Europe, uh, that robotic system may not be able to understand how Singaporeans speak. But with our own uh, specific, Singaporean specific large language models, uh, that's where the humans and uh, the, the humanoid robots can better connect and understand each other. So mm. you, you know, you can ask the robot in time to come, yeah. hey, uh, I, I, I want a makan. <laughs> And the robot may, uh, may reply, uh, yeah, sure, I, I can cook you some roti prata. You want tolo bawang with it? <laughs> you know, so that's, that's how... Uh... On, on the issue of LLMs, um, you know, humanoids, humanoids becoming you know, more integrated into our daily lives. What do you think are the key risks or ethical concerns that we should keep in mind? Hmm, okay. I, I remember as a boy, I, uh, you know, my favourite author was uh, Isaac Asimov. Okay. Uh, he wrote a, a very famous book, I, Robot, uh, in the 1940s, of which he created uh, three laws of robotics. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, law number one, uh, robots cannot hurt humans. Rule number two, uh, robots must obey humans, uh, unless uh, the, the, you know, the robot has to hurt uh, the uh, uh, human, then it doesn't work. And, and number three, the, the robot has to preserve its own existence as long as number one and number two uh, are not uh, compromised. Okay? Mm. So you can see that uh, it all surrounds uh, over safety. Yeah, safety is, is paramount. Mm. Um, of, of course, these are fictitious law, but I think it's, it still uh, uh, you know, means a lot in today's context. Yeah, so um, uh, it, it, it's a very... Um, you know, delicate balance of uh, giving a human robot full autonomy to do whatever it wants mm. and the safety of the humans. So that, that is... You uh, still need to set some boundaries. Exactly. And, mm. and that's the reason why we still do not have autonomous cars running on our roads. Mm. Yeah. How ready do you think the Singaporean society is to accept humanoid robots working alongside us, especially in critical roles? Hmm. I, I think that, um, well, first of all, I think Singapore, we are always short of manpower. Okay? So uh, th that is something that we, we have to think about. Secondly, I think as a nation, uh, we embrace technology. Yeah. So I think that moving forward, uh, we would be one of the first few countries to adopt uh, such technologies. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about the, uh, time. You know? I, I work in the field of surgical robotics, yeah? whereby... I developed robots to help, surger, uh, help in surgery. I remember uh, 20 years ago when the first uh, robot came for surgery, uh, no one wanted to do it. You know? mm. they, they insisted on getting a human surgeon to do it. Yeah, but now, you know, for certain surgeries, uh, patients would insist that a robot does it because they recognize the benefits of higher accuracy, and things like that. Yeah, so it, it will take time. It's just a matter of time, isn't mm -hmm. it, Professor Fee? Thank you so much for coming in tonight to speak with us about this. Uh, Professor Louise Fee, Vice President of Innovation and Entrepreneurship from NTU Singapore, talking about humanite robots.